Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how you can randomly generate PFP artwork for your NFT project. I'm going to show you a cool web app called NFTinator, which makes it super quick and easy to generate these PFP art pieces. Of course, this is assuming that you already have all the layers and everything that you need, but let's just jump into it. I'll show you folks how to use NFTinator to go ahead and create that artwork. So right here, we are on the NFTinator website. You can see and read through exactly what this is, is going to allow you to do but instead of reading through all of this we're just going to go ahead and jump in and start using the application so we're going to go ahead and launch the app now you can go ahead and try their demo they basically have files and everything that you can use that way you don't need to create your own artwork if you want to just go ahead and test this out but you can go ahead and select a folder of artwork that you already have now one thing that you're going to want to do is have your artwork in one folder within that folder you're going to want to have sub folders of the names of the categories. Now the naming is very important because these names are what is going to show up on your metadata, which means that is what is going to show up on marketplaces like OpenSea. So you want to make sure you have your folders named exactly what those traits are going to be called. And within each one, all of your traits should be named what the trait is going to be named. Now you don't want this to be like random numbers or letters because the name that you have here is the name that again is going to show up as your traits in your metadata so marketplaces like OpenSea and everything that is what they're going to show so you want to make sure everything is named correctly and that you have them all in your subfolders so i'm going to go back here i'm going to select the cool friends which is kind of just this side project that i am working on i'm going to select that whole folder i'm going to hit select it's going to say give access to view it and what we're going to do is select the blockchain that this is going to be on. Now, this is going to be on Polygon, but Polygon and Ethereum are essentially the same thing. You're going to go ahead and name your project. So I'm just going to name it Cool Friends here. Make sure I add that space there and the supply. So this supply right here, I'm going to make it 10,000 and we're going to hit start designing. Now, right here, you can see you have a few tabs up here, basically the steps that you have to go through in order to go ahead and generate your PFP art prototype. What this allows you to do is select different traits from your categories here. So I have hats, so I can select different hats. I can select different faces and I can make sure all these traits work together, make sure that, you know, things line up. All right. So again, that is what prototyping is. You can go ahead and play around with it. Now in prototype, you also want to make sure on the left hand side here, you can drag these layers up and down and you want to make sure that these are layered in the correct order. So of course we want our background in the back, our body, we want our shirt next, then our face and then our hats. If you had hats below body, you can see that the stacking order goes all weird and everything and that's not what you want now i highly suggest using prototyping and making sure that everything goes correctly because you don't want to randomly generate all these maybe 10,000 pfps and then have something wrong with it so make sure that you prototype make sure all the traits match and align with one another and make sure everything's good before continuing on to the generation now step two is to generate so in generate here we can go ahead and let it load a bit now the cool thing is one you can update your token supply here but if you come into each one, so like hats, you can actually set your rarities for the different traits that you have. If you want, you can go by percentage, you can go by a fixed supply. So you can see that these here are set to 1.22%. And if you scroll down, you can actually just drag this down or you can make it more common. NFT Inator, you can see, will randomly adjust everything else as well around it to make sure everything, you know, all equals out to 10,000. So you can play around with it here. You can adjust percentages by yourself. You can, you know, simply just say, hey, I only want five NFTs to have this trait here. So you can give it a number supply as well. Now, this is where you can go ahead and play with the rarity. You can get creative on what is going to be more rare than others. You know, the traits, you're the ones that you're the one that created the trait and the artwork. So you know what's rare, but you know, there is some creativity and you can give some scarcity and rarity to some of the traits. So once everything is laid out, you have all the rarities and everything set you can kind of see here 
this is what your random generation is going to be. This is what's going to be exported if you decide to go on to the next step. So if we choose to, we can run this again. You can say completely random. You can actually save designs from prototype and put them into the generation as well. So if we run this random generation again, you can see that we're going to come up with different NFTs that are generated. So they're completely different from the batch that we made previously. You can look through them, make sure they're all good and everything. You can filter so you just want to see what do the ones with the certain traits look like. You can take a look at them here, make sure everything looks good. And this is where you again, you're going to want to go through everything, make sure everything looks good. You don't want to just randomly generate it and push it out onto the blockchain and mint your project out because you want to make sure your artwork looks good for this. So again, go through everything, make sure everything's in perfect shape. And once everything is good, go on to the next step which brings us to the final step and you can continue to export so if we go to export here you can configure your collection this is basically adding in the details of what your collection is going to be called so you can put in here we're going to name it friends it'll have the number and then of course the id of what token it is you can put a little description we're just going to put test and you can put an external website to your website of your project if you choose to do so number two is where we're going to output it to so you can go ahead and select the folder that you're going to output all these files to once you select the folder then you can go ahead and export your artwork and you can see here nft Enator is going to go ahead and export all your artwork now nft Enator is a free web application to use but there's some perks to getting a premium version you can see here that it is exporting at a slower speed right now so if you wanted to get faster export speeds you can actually buy one of nft Enator's space snake society nfts it's a solana nft NFT, you can buy it on any Solana marketplace. But if you do have one of their NFTs, you can actually speed up the process of exporting. So if you're working on multiple projects, or maybe you just don't have the time to wait for everything to export for your project, check out Space Snake Society. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down the collection just a little bit so I can export this and show you folks exactly what you're going to need to create your NFT project. You're going to need your images and you're going to need your metadata. That's the two important things you're going to need. All right. So we just finished exporting all of our image files here. Of course, again, like I said, you can upload upload that artwork to an IPFS server if you choose to do so. We're going to skip that for now though. And the next thing we're going to do is export our metadata because that is going to be another important part to building our NFT. So we're going to export that. It's going to export it to the same place that it exported the images. Metadata is really quick though. It's not any images or anything. It's just some JSON files that you're going to need for later on. So we come on over to our cool friends here. You can see we have our artwork and we have our metadata. If we open up our artwork folder here, you can see I just made 50 random of these little friends here. And this is the metadata to go ahead and match. You can see we have number one all the way down to number 50. And there you go. That's how you can randomly generate your own PFP artwork for your NFT collection. Again, this is assuming that you already have the traits and everything made. So you have had all the pre-files this was just how to go ahead and randomly generate them together to create the final pfp artwork for your collection now in another video i'm going to show you how to go ahead take this artwork and metadata and actually create an erc721 token so you can actually make your nft project real the cool thing is i'm going to show you how to do this with no code so stay tuned for that video i'm sure you folks will enjoy it a lot and i hope you folks enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed and until next time in the next video. See ya.